Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct. If you start, saw our other video, it wasn't actually rotating properly, and so it was a little problem with the camera, but we've got it fixed now, so we're on our way. And today we're gonna to be talking about a beautiful shawl by Andrea Mowry, and it's called The Night Shift, and I'm very excited about it. It is mosaic knitting, and this is the copy of The Night Shift pattern by Andrea Mowry. And if you look here, um, she has this wonderful yarn. It is uh, called Dream State. Uh, been, it's by uh, Spin Cycle um, Yarns or what have you. Uh, we do not carry that yarn. And that yarn, if you buy the yarn for this pattern, the yarn is actually $180. And I thought, what better project to pick and try and figure out if we can do this beautiful project and have something that's more economical. So I am testing this DK weight Zobber Ball Stark 6 and I thought I would use it for the actual pattern. And it takes one ball to do the shawl that I've been working on. And you can see I still have a lot left. So I'm gonna try and use up as much yarn as I can. And this yarn is made in um, Germany. And if you're familiar with the regular Zauber Ball Crazy, it's very similar to that, except for it's a little bit thicker. So what I did with mine is I used a number seven needle in the pattern for this night shift. It calls for a number eight needle. And so I used a lighter weight yarn, a DK weight, instead of a worsted weight. And so I went down one needle size. Now, one thing that I wanted to remind all of you when you're doing these uh, slip stitch patterns or mosaic knitting, it can be a little bit tight, it can get tight. So when in doubt, go up one needle size. And if you're knitting this project, Night Shift, and you find that it's stiff, take it out and start over and get a larger needle because you can only block so much out. If you have a brick, when you start blocking, you will very likely have a very stiff uh, project when you're done as well. So on this Dream State, Jim, I wanted to hold it up. Oh, yeah. just a couple of people wanted to say hi. They're oh, all yes. checking Good in. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So. It's so wonderful to have you here. And I'm so excited about this night shift pattern. I just wanted to show you a few things about it and how much I'm enjoying knitting it. And I love using this Stark 6. You know how I always test products before I bring them in. And this is a rather big test that I'm doing for this Stark 6. I'm and sure I'm it enjoying it very much. And it is a wonderful yarn. Um, it seems a little light for um, compared to some of the other DK yarns. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind, but the quality of it is very wonderful. And I like the coloration of the actual yarn. And so these striping pattern is actually done with the yarn. The yarn does it itself. And then in between these um, striping patterns, you'll see the little uh, pearl bumps. And that was done with the Ultra Alpaca. This is called Ultra Alpaca Light. It's a 50-50 blend of alpaca and wool. And this is by Barocco. It's a wonderful product. And I used that in between. This is considered a sport weight yarn, but it's kind of a lofty sport weight. So the Stark 6 was um, a light, lighter DK weight. And so this lofty sport weight and the light DK weight work very well together. And I just used odds and ends that I already had. And I also put in a little bit of the Swino. So this is the actual prize for this week. And you guys can help me choose which colorations you would like. So it's three skeins in the neutral grays and then, or the three skeins in this nice uh, pinky tones, mauve tones. Um, so you tell me which ones that you like for the prize for this week and we can give that out to our winner. So just put gray or mauve. Yes, and the wonderful thing about this is you to enter to win, all you have to do is post comments in the comment section, let us know what you're working on, maybe share with your buddies and let us know where you're from so that we can you know, all enjoy this journey together. Um, knitting is wonderful, so we like sharing with others and learning from each other as well. And don't forget to push that like button. So that's great. And don't forget to share with your friends. So that's that. And then, so if you look here at my yarns here, I just used a mishmash of stuff that I already had at home. And so I have um, 
a couple balls here of the Ultra Alpaca Light, and that's these two, the tan and the, the greenish blue. And then this is leftover Sueno that I have, and that is by Haiku, and um, it is an 80-20 blend of merino and bamboo. It's an awesome yarn, and you can use it for all kinds of things. It's fabulous yarn. And this was just leftover Tenzing that I had from um, a yarn that is no longer being made, but it's a beautiful yarn too. So you can see the bumps in here. And what I did is I just went light to darker to darker to darker. And then I'm not sure what I'll do after that. But I'm looking at my shawl and Andrea Mowry's finished shawl, the dimensions are supposed to be uh, 65 inches, um, 65 inches this way by 30, did she say 35 inches? Oh, by 31 inches at the center depth. And if you measure mine, I have, even though this is a lighter weight yarn, I am on my eight repeats. She calls for nine repeats. And I am close to 37 inches. And then, oh, sorry, the depth of it is actually <clears throat> right around 29 inches. So I'm getting close, but I want to use all my yarn. And this seems just a little bit small to me. And I did block it just a little bit, not aggressively at all, um, but I did block it a little bit. And I'm gonna try and use as much yarn as I can with my project. See, I still have a lot of yarn left of this Zauber ball. And so I'm gonna keep using it and see if it gets too big, then I'll go ahead and bind off. And they use the I-cord bind off, which I think is fantastic. Um, one thing I wanted to mention by the, this has three stitch slip stitch edge on it. And when you're doing your slip stitch edge, don't forget to give yourself plenty of room. Give yourself extra space for those stitches. It may seem like it's gonna be sloppy, but if you don't, you don't get the stretch to be able to block it out. Mine, I gave a bunch of extra stretch and you can see how uniform and straight it looks. It looks absolutely fine if you give yourself extra stretch. So make sure on that that you give yourself extra room so that you don't have something that's sucked in where those slip stitch edges, um, you don't want that to happen because it makes your shawl a little more difficult to block and maybe not look quite as beautiful as it could if you didn't do that. Another thing on her pattern, she has basically, it's a 40 row repeat. And this is a, a pad of paper that I've been using to keep track of my rows for her. So she'll go um, one through eight, you knit, and then it says repeat rows one through eight. So I put, I put my little parentheses around here, and then I put one through eight. And I'm just doing these little uh, tick marks as I'm going along. So I'm just starting my eighth repeat of the pattern. Now right here it'll say repeat one through four again. And then it goes back to regular knitting. And then it says repeat rows 23 and 24. So when I was doing this pattern and I did not have this written out, I would easily lose track of where I was because I would be trying to move my sticky notes around and put tick marks. But after you have about four tick marks, you're like, what tick marks should I be paying attention to? And so I would get all fouled up and go, where am I? And so this was the way that I could actually knit the project and keep track of everything and never get off my pattern. Now, another thing that I did is when you're knitting with two yarns and you're slipping and uh, stitches, etc., and you put your work down, you may have one yarn on each side of your work. Well, you look at it and you're in a hurry. You're like, where am I supposed to knit? There's yarns on both sides. It's hard to tell, right? So what I do for mine is I put this all on one needle, but I actually stopped at the beginning of my row number one and I have it sitting right there so that I know that I'm working with this brown yarn. I'm not stopping at the, ever, the beginning or the end of, a, of the very end of a row. I'm not stopping there because it makes it hard for me to tell which yarn to pick up and work with. What I'm doing is starting another row and then leaving it there with the start. So I go, oh, that's where my working yarn is. And then I don't get fouled up and have to try and figure out where I'm at. So that was another thing that helped me. 
Yes, Jim. There's a bunch more people joined in awesome. from the East Coast, hey, Midwest, Minnesota, it's so nice Chicago, to have all of you here. Florida. And well, I love this night shift shawl pattern. And Andrea Mowry shows us with the, um, her yarn where she has six different skeins of her yarn that she's using. And it is beautiful. Um, it is called Dream State. Um, I think it's by um, Spin Cycle or something like that, Dream State. And it's really, really nice. Yes, yeah, spin cycle yarns in its dream state. Um, the problem with that, it's like $31 a skein. And then by the time you buy your six skeins, you have to pay tax and you have to buy the pattern. It's a super, super expensive shawl to make, even though it's beautiful. How much is it? And um, well, for the kit, it's $180. And I don't know if that comes with the pattern or not. I hope that it does for that. But um, it's so expensive that most of us, for $180, we um, would not see the benefit of making something quite so expensive. Um, unless we have endless uh, finances for our yarn, um, we would not be able to do that. So I'm kind of talking today about how we can make this night shift shawl and make it more economical. And so I am testing this Zabra Ball Stark 6 in the DK weight. And I'm using just one skein that it's like $31. And then how I used a little bit of this Ultra Alpaca Light and my leftovers that I had at home in a DK weight and put it with this and was able to make the whole shawl for right around $32. So it's a great cost savings and it still looks quite beautiful. I mean, it's nice. So this is fantastic. And then I wanted to show you something. When I was talking to my friend, Tara, who happens to work here at Alpaca Direct, she said that she kind of had a hard time starting the shawl. And so I thought I would do the setup rows of night shift and kind of show you how to get that slip stitch edge started. I thought maybe that might help some of you that are getting stuck on this. And then, um, before you start, let me sure. say one other thing. Oh, sure. much people, more people are joining in. Good morning. They said that buys a lot of yarn for $180. Oh, it buys a lot of yarn for $180. I could not believe. I mean, it's beautiful and everything. Oh, there is also another plus of doing it the way that I'm talking about. And you have so many less ends to weave in. So the yarn does the patterning for you, the stripes for you, and you have way less ends to weave in. It's so much easier to finish. So for those of you who have a problem with your finish work or don't like weaving in ends, this is another reason to use it. Also, I wanted to put this concentric in front of you. Now, I haven't done the dream state in this yarn, but guess what this yarn is? It's 100% alpaca and it has long colorways and it's a worsted weight. So. And we just put it on sale today. It's on sale today? Yeah. Oh, you guys, it's on sale today. I love sales. <laughs> That's awesome. That's an extra, extra, extra bonus. And the fantastic part about this is, look, there's four different colorways in this green one. There's a lot of different colorways, and all of them have four different colors. Isn't that cool? And you could possibly do this for Dream State and get something beautiful and have it made out of alpaca just in case you were thinking that might work for you. And I know that you could do this shawl in just one skein because I'm sitting here, it's a similar yardage to my Stark 6, and look how much I have. And I still have this much yarn left. So you could possibly do it in this concentric. Now the concentric's a little bit more expensive. It's right around the $40 range, right, Jim? Mm -hmm. But having it on sale is pretty nice. And that might make a pretty project too, especially if you had some odds and ends to do these little pearl bumps in the background or what have you. I don't know. You could look at it. Oh, I had one Maybe request. Yes. Since it's our anniversary this week. Yay. See if they want to, if anyone wants to guess how many years we've been married and wish you happy anniversary. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> we've been together. I'll give you a little hint. We've been together most of our lives. We've kind of grown up together. Actually, we met in college at Cal State Hayward, and I was just starting, and Jim was in his senior year of college, and I was going through the nursing program there. So that is how we met, and we've been together a long time. So if you can guess, that's awesome. We've been together quite a while, I will tell you that. 
So let's take a look at this cast on and then I'll be talking about who won the prize from last week. And last week we had Sueno in these two colorways and which one was the lucky winner, Jim? A dark blue. The dark blue was the lucky winner. So the winner of last week's will get this Sueno worsted and it's in the tonal colorway. Fantastic yarn, 80-20 blend of merino and bamboo. It's new to us so we're excited about that yarn. All right, let's take a look at our night shift and see if we can do this setup here. All right, and another thing I wanted to mention is with my night shift, I had color A was my slip stitch um, color, and that was, uh, sorry Jim, that was this multicolored, and it stayed color A throughout. Now color B, which started with my light tan color, was the color that changed to my leftovers. That was the pearl bump color, right? So we have using color A, let's see if I can find an end here without too much of a mess. One second here. Take me a minute to find the end. And I'm also using these wonderful Chowgu needles, and we're looking at the interchangeable needles. And I have a little concern about it, and let me tell you what the concern is with these Chowgus. First, I wanted to show you something. Wait one second, Jim. I gotta go grab something. I gotta show them something. Uh, let me put that there so I don't lose my tail. So with the Chowgu nails, I wanted to show you a, just a little tiny comparison. We had a customer say that Chowgu needle cords don't have memory, right? So I wanted to show you what we're talking about when we're talking about memory versus no memory. So here's a Chowgu needle. Do you see how it's nice and flat? The cord is really flat. Here's our Addy cord. And this is not from being folded. It'll be like that. Now watch me set it down. Now watch this one. Isn't that interesting? No memory memory. So what this means for you when you're knitting along is sometimes the cords will bend in a funny way and you'll have to kind of push it out of your way. You'll have to maneuver it to get it to behave. Where with these Chowgu needles, that never happens because there's no memory in it. R straight out of the package, they're like this. This is a brand new needle. Now back to what I was talking about, we're testing these needles. They have, um, they're interchangeables and they have that cord, the different cords on there. My concern is with the Chowgu, the way they've decided it to make these is they have small cords, medium cords, and large cords. And the small cords don't fit on the medium size needles. The medium cords don't fit on the small or the large size. And they have, it'll t say right here on the side of the cord right there. Do you see right there? It says small. And I'm concerned that people are going to go traveling and they're going to bring the wrong cord size with them. And then they won't have a cord for the needles that they need to knit with. It's just a concern that I have. So if you guys have any thoughts on that, if you can uh, let me know what you think about that. And that's one concern that I have one before I pick up these needles. I, I'm just thinking about that and I'm worried about that. So don't mind my pearls and knits here because my cast on I actually changed the direction of my I cord edge but I don't want to bother you with that so we are going to cast on six two three four five six all right then our setup row I always like to do pink for the beginning of a right-sided row and I use these silly little hair bands and but we have we sell um, uh, stri um, stitch markers here at Alpaca Direct that are just fine as well. All right. So for the first setup row, it says knit three and then slip three with yarn in front. So you take your working yarn and you would knit one, two, and three. And then I'm going to put my stitch marker on and then slip three with your yarn in front. Okay. Then grab my working yarn, get my tail out of the way. We're going to do knit one, 
two, three. Then we have a make one right. So we grab the running thread, put that on the top. You see the V there? Make one right. And then slip three with the yarn in front is what the pattern calls for. Don't mind my extra notes because I don't want to teach you to do things wrong. I want, I want you to learn the way that the pattern has instructed you. I always make everything different, as you know. And so, knit one. Oops, I got a little strand there. Two and three. And then we have a, and one second. Oh, knit three, make one right. And we're just increasing here. And there you go. And oops, oops, oops. One second, Jim. I have a, I didn't need to make one right. I got on the wrong right. I'm on knit three, purl one, and slip three. Knit three, purl one, and then slip three with yarn in front. I'm catching the yarn in the back of my work here and then we have another increase which is a knit one two three and then I have put it up on the needle and make one right and knit to the last three stitches Got it, and slip three with yarn in front. And let me do one more row. So what are you doing there? We're casting on for our actual shawl. Um, Tara had said that she had a little bit of a problem um, casting on and knitting it. So I'm just showing her that, and then this one is purled to the last three stitches. And then we purl to last and slip through with yarn in front. And what it's doing is it's making your eye cord edge on one side and then the, there, here's your other edge, slip stitch edge. And that's all you do, repeat rows three and four three more times <coughs> until you have 11 more stitches. And then you'll see this I-cord edge begin to develop. And I'll show you on my pattern over there so you can see what it looks like. But it's that easy, and that's how you cast on. So I hope this helps you cast on for your night shift shawl. And it is a super easy slip stitch pattern. The big thing that I want you to remember when you're working on this shawl and you're just trying to decide what needle that you're gonna use for the night shift, make sure that you use a little larger size needle. Don't go too small. If your fabric is super stiff when you're, you're knitting it, that is common in slip stitch patterns. Go up a needle size, take it out. You can take, you can get a little stiffness out by blocking, but you can't completely fix it. If it's a board when you block it, it's probably gonna be a board after you're done blocking it. No matter how you pull it and stretch it, it's still gonna be super st stiff. So if you look at this project that I have here, I have this on a number seven needle for a DK weight yarn. Here's my I cord edge. That's that right here is where I was telling you, showing you how you cast on. So that's how you do that. Uh, that's the I cord edge that you're making when you cast on. But it's super simple. All you do is you're slipping the stitches with the yarn either in the front or the back, depending on which side you're knitting. And it's, it makes a beautiful, finished, lovely edge. Why don't you hold it up so they can see it kind yes, of drapes? Yes, of course. So if I was going to wear this, see how pretty it is? My needles are kind of in the way, but it's really pretty. <laughs> 
I'm looking forward to finishing it so I can put it here in the shop and encourage other people to make it because it's a fantastic pattern. So, and it's, it is really mosaic knitting. All it is is slipping stitches, needle tip to needle tip from the left hand needle over to the right hand needle in a certain pattern. And it's super easy to do it and super fun. Um, mosaic knitting is, there's nothing to it at all. So let's get back to our winner. We had a winner for this week, right? And let's see if we can find our winner. Uh, let's look right here. Oh, Linda wins, W-E-Y-N-S. And Linda won, so I know, worsted tonal. Congratulations, Linda, Linda, it's wonderful. I'm so glad that you won this yarn, mm, so soft. So this is the prize, all you have to do is get in touch with us, let us know what your shipping address is, and we can send it out in the mail to you. That's fantastic. And for those of you for this week who would like to help me to choose the colors for the prize this week, this is Ultra Alpaca Light, and it would be great background colors for your night shift shawl if you decided to do that. And this would be plenty of yarn, I think, for the whole shawl for the background colors. And it is wonderful because it's 130, uh, 144 yards. Oh, yeah, you would have lots of yarn. So you let me know. Let's go ahead and have you, do you like these mauve tones or do you like gray? You choose. And we'll send this for the price for next week. And this night shift is a great pattern it doesn't have to be expensive you don't have you can make this beautiful shawl and it doesn't have to be expensive it can be right around the 32 dollar 30 to 40 dollar range doesn't have to be an 80 dollar uh, 180 dollar project it can be less expensive and it's super super fun hey there was a few get um guesses on our number of years we've been married oh yes go ahead i want to hear <laughs> well a bunch of them flew by so i saw some it's okay what so what 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 were they so there was 26, I saw Ooh, that's close. 27, 30. Close. It's more. Yep, it's more than that. Yeah. So. We've been together most of our lives. We've kind of grown up together. So it's 33 years. Yes, it's 33 years this week. Oh my goodness, time flies when you're having fun. That's why you need to hurry up and have fun, right? Because time just goes by. It seems every year it goes by a little faster. <laughs> But it's fantastic, and I am so grateful to be married to my wonderful husband. I don't know if all of you are blessed to have such a wonderful husband at, like I do, um, but he is fantastic, and I'm happy to have him with me. He's my partner, partner in crime. <laughs> so this next week, we are going to be talking about something baby i'm having a hard time deciding if you guys have any ideas about baby things that you want to talk about i'm thinking something in crochet possibly and something in knitting so we'll have to see how that works and i have another uh it's called pima reno and it's by plymouth yarn company and it is a pima cotton merino blend yarn that i'm going to be testing and i want to make something with that yarn and then um, I'll probably use something that we have here in the shop just because it's handy and we have lots of nice yarn. So I'll do that too. And then um, I think that was it. Let me just make sure that I went through everything with you on how I made my shawl. Um, I talked about the uh, different yarns and looking for the long color changes to make it work with this project. So having long color changes such as these two guys or this one. I kind of like this one because it has more of a tweed. It has the, the multi-stranded different colored yarns in there. And it, I thought that maybe I would, the colorways would get too short when I got to the top, that they would be too short, mm, but they still look pretty good. I'm, I'm actually pleased. I thought I might have a problem with that, but I don't think I'm going to. I think it's going to be beautiful. So I'm really excited about that. And I think I pretty much covered everything else. Uh, Linda, congratulations again for your prize that you won. 
and I hope you guys all have a great week. I know it's beautiful outside here. We may get up to 60 degrees this week. Can you believe it? I mean, just not too long ago, we were almost at zero in snow, freezing cold, and now I can almost run outside. I'm so excited. I'm looking outside going, mmm, I can run again and I don't have to worry about falling on ice. So that is fantastic. So I am looking forward to a little spring weather. You guys have a great week. You take care of yourselves. And next week we're going to be talking about stuff for baby. So get ready. We'll be here 9.30 a.m. next week.